Morning everybody. Um, today's readings are from Acts chapter 2 verses 14 and verses 36 to 41 and that's the day of Pentecost when Peter um, goes out to speak to the crowd um, asking them to repent, telling them what they'd done to the Messiah and to accept the gift of the Holy Spirit um, and today's gospel reading is Luke 24 verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you doing discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor, Jerusalem? And do you not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, Jesus said. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going to go further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Father God, I just thank and I praise and I bless you um, that you are a God who speaks to all of us. And um, I just pray that you will bless the words that I'm about to speak. Thank you. So, hi. So, some things in our lives are easy to do, easy to say and easy to change. But some things are not just difficult, but very hard. Those events, easy or hard, change and shape us. Those things make us review what we think we know, changing it into a true certainty or not. Why were those two disciples on the road? The Bible doesn't say. Why had they left Jerusalem? Again, the Bible doesn't say. Perhaps they were looking for some time out, rest from the constant open grief and confusion, not only of the other disciples, but their own. Maybe they were distancing themselves from any possible fallout following the death of Jesus. What we do know is that all the disciples were hurt and disappointed in what they had witnessed, not just the two on that road. Disappointed about the finality of the death of Jesus and what that meant to the Jewish people. No getting rid of those Romans, no Jewish kingdom, no freedom at all. What had the last couple of years been about anyway? Were they so afraid of further disappointments that they had turned their backs on their friends and fellow disciples? The resurrection? Yeah, right, like that's going to happen. How they felt coloured their perception, their trust in Jesus and God. It stopped them from believing that another change was coming into not only their lives, but the entire world's. 
That feeling of disappointment and hurt had become a barrier. They had become frightened to take a risk of faith and trust, to trust and believe in all that Jesus had taught them, shown them. We have all had times in our lives when we have been disappointed and hurt, and we turn and we in turn have hurt and disappointed others. This is not the problem. The true problem occurs when we allow the hurts of the past to prevent us from reaching out to gods and others in and with love. The two disciples, for whatever reasons, were walking on that road for their own purpose. They were so engrossed with their own concerns, their own conversation, that they never even saw the person who walked up to them until he actually spoke. In our lives, we meet people who change not only us, but our journey. They can guide us onto the right path. They may have <clears throat> excuse me, they may have knowledge of the way ahead that may save us some time or points of interest that we should see along the way or places to stop and rest. They may also have knowledge of any possible dangers on the road. We all need others to help us on our personal road, often not realising we have been helped until after the event. People step in and out of our lives just as we step in and out of theirs. Walking alongside, then the paths may diverge and we might never meet them again. But, just as they leave something of their selves behind, so do we. When Peter spoke to the crowds, he made them realise what they had done and to whom they had done it to, the Messiah, the Saviour of the world, sent from God. He could have ignored them altogether for their part in Jesus' death. He could have let the hurt he was feeling colour how he felt about the whole situation and those people who had clamoured for Jesus' death, but he didn't. He asked them to repent of their part in Jesus' death and to repent of their own lives. He offered them a chance to learn and change. Peter spoke for all of us. Jesus died for all of us. We don't learn in isolation. We need to be taught and guided throughout our lives. We need to look at and learn about the bigger picture so that the truth is revealed. Some things are easily explained, but some things are hidden. Unless we know what and where to look for them, they will remain hidden. So even though Jesus had explained what was going to happen, his disciples either didn't want to hear or truly did not understand. We like the disciples, pretend at some time that things are okay, we're fine, thank you. We all wear masks, hiding our true selves from not only the world but ourselves. The one true fact is that we may be able to fool others and ourselves, but we can never fool God. He knows us. Had the two disciples fooled themselves that everything would be okay, that even though, that even though Jesus walked alongside them, they failed to see him. In some Bibles, it says that Jesus was in a different form. Luke 24, 16 states they were prevented from seeing him. Perhaps Jesus wanted them to finally hear and understand all that he'd been telling them without the distraction of his presence. Perhaps they had to walk along that road to hear and see with total clarity, no distractions at all, just the three of them. In the busy lives we lived, note the past tense there, the noise of the world around us, we can sometimes lose our focus, not just lose it, but set it aside for another day, another less busy time, and never pick it back up. Perhaps, like the two disciples, we need some alone time with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Perhaps we need to hear what is being said and search for that understanding. Perhaps we need to listen more, stop and rest, spend more time looking into the scriptures, searching for a clear understanding of who God is, what he wants from us and what we can do and give him. For we must never forget that he gave us his all, his everything, his son, Jesus. At times, the road we are on may seem never-ending, an endless line of grey. Nothing to see, nothing of interest on either side of the road. No turn-offs, lay-bys or rest stops. Nothing, just the road. Other times, the road stops abruptly. It has disappeared and we have no idea what has happened to it 
or where we are expected to go from that point on. Some roads are bumpy, potholed, filled with obstacles, some smooth and flat. Others climb upwards to great heights and yet others go down to the lowest depths. Dropping suddenly, rising sharply and twisting suddenly with no rhyme or reason. It doesn't matter what the road is like. What matters is who is walking that road with you. Who is by your side, guiding, encouraging, teaching, upholding and loving you every step of the way. What knowledge can the road to Emmaus bring us at this time? Let us look at the three major moments in the lives of those two disciples as they walked along the road and later shared supper with Jesus. First, Jesus opened up the scriptures for them. Second, he not only opened up their physical eyes, but their spiritual ones. Thirdly, he gave them understanding. These three things are things that we should desire with everything we have. The Holy Spirit caused life to flow through their veins and heart and those of Peter and all those who believed on that day in the resurrected Lord. This life is contagious. This life causes people to turn from what they know and understand to what they can only glimpse from the corner of their earthly eyes. There are two roads we walk in our lives. One hours that we walked alone before we met Jesus. And then the other one is the one that we walk with Jesus. This last road never divides. Once we start walking with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we might leave it, but Jesus leaves with us. We might forget him, but he still walks with us. According to Dr. James Boyce, when the Bible is opened and we see Jesus as he is interpreted to us by the Holy Spirit, we will never be the same again. The word itself will be different. It will have a theme, make sense. And what is more, it will be a blessing for it will be the place where we meet with Jesus who died for us and who now lives to be known, not just by his followers, but by the whole world. Our role in all of this is this. As we walk our own road to Emmaus, let us look out for the stranger who for a time may walk alongside us. Let us tell them our story, our journey along the Emmaus road, about how and where we met Jesus, where our minds and hearts were changed, our eyes and ears opened and our very veins and hearts burned with excitement and joy. Share who we were before and who we are now because the stranger could be someone who needs to know that they are loved by Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that they are an important part of God's purpose. But share all of this because most importantly, that stranger could be Jesus wanting us to understand who he is and who we are in him, to have open eyes to see what he has in store for us and our lives. Proverbs 2 verses 3 to 5 says, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The road we and the rest of the world are all walking at the same time, the road known as COVID-19, is not a road that we expected to walk, but God expected it and God knew about it. So what does God expect and want from us all at this time? Trust, faith, hope and love. Trust that he will see us through this, that we believe fully in him, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Faith that we will lean on him, knowing he has and never will forsake us and that we will grow more into that faith. Hope that his will be done, not just in our lives, but over the whole world, every forgotten corner. Love, that we will grow more in love, more in love with Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that we will grow stronger in his love for us all and that we will grow to love his world and ourselves even more. Chris Rimmer and I attended a meeting about worship 
and going through the stands, I came across this leaflet about the Bible. It states, God's worth is truth unchanged and unchanging. It is full of hope for the lost, full of life for the dead, full of joy for the redeemed, full of peace for the troubled, full of love for the sinners, full of comfort for the mourners, full of liberty for the captives. And it is full of the Lord Jesus Christ for you, for me and for the world. So let us be prepared to meet the Lord on our own road to Emmaus. Let us be prepared to be changed. Let us be prepared to live in the very heart of God with his Son as our companion and the Holy Spirit as our guide in opening our eyes, ears and hearts to the truth that lives in the scripture and burns like a fire in our very veins. Let us pray. Father God, maker and creator, we believe and trust and have hope and faith in you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When we walk along our own road to Emmaus, help us to trust you in all things, have faith in that we are never alone and raise us up to pray into and believe in the hope of the end to this dark and troubled times. And we rejoice in the love that is unconditional, non-judgmental and never ending. It just is. It is free to everyone who looks for it. Amen. <laughs>